um, the introduction part. Uh, thanks for getting on the call. Good to see people like Mr. Toesland and that, you guys on the call. It's been a while. Um, but here we are with Alex Webb and we've got uh, Mark Hudson jumping on um, very shortly too. We've got a few questions for Al, but um, yeah, just first of all, Al, how are you doing, mate? You all right? Absolutely super. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, really good. Really good. <laughs> Starting to feel festive. Uh, so I've got some questions here um, from the guys and the team. Um, <laughs> Um, in no particular order, as X Factor says. Um, the first question really is: Is what? Um, like how do you get sales when starting out? Like, what strategy um, would you use to find your first customer? Make a list. Yeah. Make a, just make a list. Okay. Don't, don't pre. Yeah. Don't prejudge. I mean, what I tend to do <clears throat> when I'm sort of looking at people or this trying to get um, any type, any type of, basically I run them both online, you know, it's, it runs together, it doesn't run on its own. You know, if you're going to talk to someone, they're either going to be op uh, opportunity driven or they're going to be, or they're going to be both. Um, <clears throat> I've got to use a gravy there at the background. Um, but when you sort of go out, the first thing you have to do, and most people don't do this, make a list of as many people as possible and you know just don't you know the guy in the garage this that and the other the, the, his wife just just get people's names and numbers i mean i keep saying to people you know you, you said something very interesting there dan you know how would you get more customers for the beginning of the year or even now i said it on the last zoom call grab yourself a little black book and every party you go to speak to people and have exactly the same pitch just say, listen, I've got something you might be, you might find interesting, and just leave it at that and say, what is it? Say it's nutrition, and don't go any further than that. Don't start saying, I'll send you a link. I'll do this. Just drop the name down where the party was, and some sort of reference so you can remember them. And I'll guarantee this: by the end of um, Christmas, you'll have a hundred, a hundred people, right? If you break that down, this is, what, this is where a lot of people don't get the numbers game. If you break 100 people right down, you're probably going to get, I would say, even if you're not very good, 10 to 15 sales. Even if you're not very good, somebody will look on the website and say, oh, that's interesting, I'll try it. And some of them will be opportunity driven. And some of them will be both. And what you need to do is put out the right seed to get the right feedback. Your job is to listen, it's not to speak, it's not to sell. Don't sell anything in this business, right? It's too high a commodity, okay? And a lot of people aren't even ready for the opportunity. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got something in my voice there. But yeah, I mean, getting new people, the first thing I do is make a list again. That's all I do. There's, you know, there's no other two ways about it and then hit the phone or hit the um, inboxes. But you know, some people are saying, I mean, can you, uh, can you put me on big screen so I can uh, see everyone? I just want to ask everyone something. Is that better? Uh, no, maybe it's me. Oh, no, uh, no, it's all right, you can't do it. I mean, maybe, maybe um, just um, what I'm saying to you, last month was pretty good. The month before was phenomenal, right? Our minds all work in different ways. Sometimes when we don't hit our mark, we sometimes get really a little bit, uh, I don't know, depressed or something because we didn't hit the mark. Well, that's part of your journey to get to that um, uh, mark. It's a bit like Dan, Dan's pushing so hard with Harriet to get to those next positions. <clears throat> and he really wanted NMD this month. You know, he was a little bit short. I know he'll, he'll smash it in um, uh, uh, January. But his attitude, was like this. I don't think I'm going to go. I don't think I'm going to make it out. And I said, are you sure? Are you got any more in the party? He said, no, I, 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 I'm, and I'm happy with it. It's a great learning curve. And that was the thing that I liked about Dan. He's, he, he took something that was, could have been devastating and turned it into massive positivity. And that's what you've got to look at all the time with Dan and Harriet. <clears throat> How they turn the negatives into a positive. And this goes on and on and on for your whole career. So if I say to you, how many clients do you want to get for the new year, we'll determine on how big your list is. If you've got a list that big, guess what's going to happen? If you've got a list that big, guess what's going to happen? And don't prejudge people. I mean, don't go to people who are <clears throat> obviously not going to help themselves. There's no point. 
there's no point, you know, you might be able to do the product that way. But really guys, get yourself a little black book, I'll have my own book, I will be collecting names and numbers and stuff like that right now, all over the place, everywhere I'm going right now, I'm just getting names and numbers, and all I'm doing is making it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, so I can go back to the pot. And if, so, and if some do, great, if some don't, great. Some will, some won't, so what next? It doesn't make any difference. This is a numbers game, it's getting through the hundred. You know, and if you had a hundred names down there, and telephone numbers, and maybe inboxes, or whatever you're gonna use <clears throat> to communicate with them. If I said to you, right, can you imagine a big barrel of oysters? Beautiful, fresh oysters, and there's a hundred oysters in this, in this barrel and it's filled up with water. Just imagine it. And inside one of those oysters is a massive black pearl worth absolutely thousands. Would you open all the oysters? Just think about it, of course you would. It's the same with this, it's a numbers game. Hey, guess what? You might open the first oyster and the black pearl's there. Pretty good luck when there's a hundred there, it's a hundred to one. But would you give up on 92? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, you hit the hundred, and guess what? Once you do that, that is the price you're paying to find the pearl. It's a numbers game. It's how you deal with something. When somebody says no, guess what? As it happens, Alex, you know, I'm not really interested in your business and I don't really like your product. Um, as it happens, I don't even like you. You're gonna get all that. I've had it. But it doesn't make any difference because what you're doing right now is putting your armor on to go right through this next stage. Now, at some point, some of you in December are going to have a great month, and some of you are going to believe that everybody else is not interested in doing anything wrong. I went sales coordinator in December because I didn't think about it. I didn't go, I'm going to buy into December. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to make it this month. I didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't do it. I should do more. And that's why my business has is, is grown so big because you, if you can grow with your business, you can then teach your people and hold their hand to take them through everything that you're going through. Because next year, you're going to have loads of um, people in your group that's going into their first Christmas. How do you deal with it? How do you get your mindset correct? So getting right back to what Dan said from the very beginning, you want more punters? Make a bigger list. Just to follow on from that, Al, so you've got your list of people. What's the first thing you would say to approach these people when it comes down to the crunch of following up? Oh, well, if it's on product level, I'll try and separate them between product and opportunity. That's the first thing. I do all the people, you got a hundred names, split them. <clears throat> because not everyone will be driven by the product and not everyone will be driven by the pro uh, making money. But it's the questions you ask. And I always say to this, do you know anybody he wants to look good, feel good, lose weight, make money on Facebook. And 90% of them say me, or yes. And then somebody, you know, the good thing about it is somebody's gonna say to you, I don't know anyone. Well, guess what? They're not gonna to wanna to be in your business. So you can cancel them out. The other people you put to one side. <clears throat> oh yeah, I know loads of people who wanna look good and, feel and, and lose weight. And I know, they're all on the internet. Do you know any um, single mums? Oh yeah, I know that. And you start asking the right questions <clears throat> and then come back and listen. You know, you, you go like that. Use your, my, your mouth and your ears in the right you know, proportion. Because most of us tend to try and um, sell ourselves. And we don't, it's not about selling ourselves. It's about listening to what that lady or that guy says. Or it might not be him. It might be his mum who wants the product. And that's the, I'll send some information for your mum. And start putting out by the information. You'll know exactly what to send to somebody if you listen to them. Which means you could go through your 100 names probably in <clears throat> a week. And if you've got an opportunity meeting, in, uh, when's your next one, Dan? We've got um, the opportunity, sort of it's like a Christmas party thing on Wednesday. 
Um, <coughs> and then after that, our next big one's going to be in January. So Wednesday really is our next one. You see, I, me personally, I would if, if, if there was a party going on, like you're doing in Manchester, I would have driven somebody up from, uh, from Bath to Manchester to see the people. Not to see the business, not to do that. Just say, hey, what do you think the people? Said, These guys are great. They're all focused and they can't wait to get into next year. Most people don't get that from other people. They don't get that motivation from the average person. We do because we live it. We're going through it all the time. But most people, if I tell you right now, I seriously would, I say, right, why don't you come along for a drink and meet some of the people who I work with are really cool. And that's what I do. As you, every, any, any, any time you can put people in front of other people that are highly motivated and want to change things in their lives, either through health or through wealth or through whatever, then put them in the same room. It's contagious, guys. Those people are going to go back over the Christmas and say, God, they were so positive and I'm surrounded by a load of nagheads at the moment. Think about it. Dan. Okay, so um, my sort of final thing would be, I mean, for me, the, the, one of the best things that ever happened to me in this business was my team went from 30 to 1 in my first three months and for that, failure to happen was one of the best and biggest learning curves that I ever received. So that's why when I hit national marketing director, I wasn't disappointed because you either win or you learn. And I think that if you can have the attitude in this business in terms of there's never a failure, then you can become unstoppable. And um, for me personally, I think that um, attitude is everything. They say that your attitude is your altitude. So for you, what was your um, what was what was your biggest asset when it comes to how did you become the man that you are today? If that doesn't sound too cheesy, <laughs> <laughs> um, same way you're doing it, man. Um, I think what I brought to the table when I first started this business, what I brought was work ethics. I, I was a hard grafter. You know, when I, when, I, when I was a hairdresser, I worked hard. I really, really did. I pumped it and pumped it. I was the first in, last out. But that was just me. Um, so I brought that to the table in this business. I think the other one as well is, I wanted, when, when my mentor always said to me, get people to earn more money than you, Al. And I didn't get that. You know, you know, I really, sorry, I'm trying to make myself light here so you can all see me. Um, yeah, um, you know, help people make more money than you. You know, I've got probably, uh, I think, in my business right now, three people who are earning more than me in my business, who I've taught this business. I'll guarantee Dan will. You know, I, I really hope so, and there's no reason why not, you know. Because I, 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 I've got to a plateau where I'm building, but I mean, then, then it changes. And your business will do that. You'll get to a plateau where you, your business is big and it'll start paying out so much money um, that your lifestyle will change. And you've got to visualize this. I used to, you know, Shay says to me, Al, if you want to be an NM national marketing director, put, talk to national marketing directors. Don't talk to people who are just bumbling about. And this, all the information I got, from uh, as I was growing, I remember Ron Brand. You might know him. Um, you might know his son. Um, what's his name? Um, Russell. Russell. Russell Brand. <clears throat> I remember Russell Brand when he used to he used to play with my son at the back of the meetings. You know, when I think they were about fifteen. You know, and Ron Brand was in our business. His dad, <laughs> and he's the biggest thing Ron Brand gave me. I don't really know him that well. <clears throat> But he said, keep your open, open. I didn't understand what he meant by that. Keep your open, open, which means keep bringing on new business. Keep bringing new blood into your business. Don't stop. Don't think, oh, I've got five or six people. I'm happy with that. It, I, I think it, I've sponsored probably 120 uh, people in my career. I think around about that. I, I, I love the numbers. 
But out of all that, if you think about it, the turnover is th three million a month. Now, I could have stopped at 50 people. I could have stopped at 75 people. I could have, st hey, guess what? I could have not gone to the meeting that I met John Holowati at where there was four people in the room because it was raining and it was a long way to Manchester. I could have made that, I could have made that decision. Imagine if I would have made that decision. And that guy brought 17,000 people into my business and there was only three, four people in the room, me inclusive. That's this business and a lot of people don't get it. It's going that extra mile, guys. It's doing the thing that other people won't do. Successful people do what unsuccessful people are not prepared to do. Just not prepared. Why? Because their dreams aren't big enough. Why? Because their why ain't strong enough. I was talking to Romy today <clears throat> and uh, I said in life, you know, if you're prepared to crawl over broken glass to get to that other end, to make it work, if you, if you have that passion to do that, you can't fail in anything. But the passion comes through sometimes of your failures, I don't even like to use the word fail because I don't, I don't think you can. I failed my way. I failed my way to where you see me now. I failed. I failed and I failed and then I, then I gained. And then I failed and gained. Failed and gained. That's my, that's my story. I didn't just go out. It's 20 odd years. You're looking at 20 odd years of me being let down by people but also massively inspired by people as well. In my group, Dan and Harry inspire me. I love their work ethics. I love their, <clears throat> their, um, their giving back. They, they, they give more than they take. And in this business, that's how it is. You know, sometimes you think, is it worth it? And all of a sudden it starts turning. Or somebody you, you're working with, not doing very well, brings an absolute superstar in. And that happened with Cassie Ann. That happened with Ed. Rob Molyneux, John Holowati, Emma Sneddon. These are all people that I never met before in my life. And it's about digging down deep. You can make December the best month if you want to. It's all in your mind. That's it. Mm. It's all in your mind. Amazing. Thank you so much, Al. <clears throat> yeah. You know where I'm coming from. I think, I think maybe you can all... Um, you can all feel it. Definitely. You know, you know, you wouldn't be on the call if, if, if you didn't want something. I mean, I can talk all day long and try and inspire you, but I think the biggest inspiration is ourselves. When we look at ourselves and say, guess what? I am going to make the next 90 days history. And you can. You can come out of the next 90 days from right now, the next 90 days when they have the next meetings and you've got a big meeting in, um, in Trowbridge, you could have 50 people in that room if you wanted to. Get your little black box, start collecting all those little seeds, follow them up correctly, the fortune's in the follow-up. It's not in just getting the numbers and losing the book. It's going through it. And that's why we get paid so much money by going through it and going that extra mile. Love it. Thank you, Al. Oh, an absolute pleasure, guys. I hope it, I hope it just sort of helps you get over the uh, Christmas bump. That's what it's all about. It isn't easy. Yeah. Thank you so much, Al, um, for your time, mate. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. No problem, mate. I just want to say before I go, um, <clears throat> it's been an absolute pleasure uh, working with you guys this year. Seriously, I know some of you are new into the business and you're just starting to happen. You know, great to see Chris on the, on the line. Nice to see you back in the UK, Chris. But uh, the relationships that I've, I've created with uh, some of you guys are absolutely forever. And, uh, you know, I'm saying thank you to you guys as well for making this a journey this year. Uh, not only, um, you know, successful, because it has, it's been very successful. Next year is going to be insane for you because you've already put C's down last year. But, you know, I really feel uh, grateful of what you've given me this year as well. So, you know, don't underestimate yourselves, guys. You, you're, we're all giving each other something. 
And I, I just want to wish you a massive, fantastic Christmas for me and all my family. I really do mean that. Um, and make next year your dream. Please do. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, guys. It took me everything to make myself to where I am now. And there's, now you can take it another stage further. And that, that, the gift that we're all giving each other is care. Just care for each other. And have a fantastic Christmas. Stay cool, guys. Thanks, Al. Cheers, man. <clears throat> okay, so when it comes to this business, you need to surround yourself with the correct mentors. And that's one of the first things that I realized when um, I joined this business. And I went to um, a nightly game plan where John Holloway put on an event. And I had Alex Webb as my, as my mentor at the time. But then I seen this guy on stage uh, I don't know who this guy was, but the energy and excitement and passion just caught my eye. Um, and I said to Harriet, that guy needs to get in my life. Um, I need this guy to mentor me. Um, and I reached out to Mark, and ever since, he's helped me build my business. So I would say that Alex um, is the guy that's helped me with the psychology of this business. But when it comes down to the nitty-gritty atten and attention to detail, um, Mark Hudson really is the guy for the job. So, um, Mark, I just want to hand over to you, mate. Um, and yeah, if you could quickly introduce yourself as well, that'd be amazing. Uh, yeah, cool. I mean, uh, let me know if you can hear me. Is that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. I thought you were on about somebody else, and I was like, oh, it's somebody else coming on. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, I'll keep it. I'll keep it um, short and sweet for for sort of what we're going to chat about today um one because normally i have like meetings all the time so i have to keep things short and go to another meeting but tonight i've got fajitas cooking so you know i love fajitas so that is like very important to me now uh, but yeah basically my story is uh, i run a digital agency and um, we build websites do branding strategies for you know huge clients to do hundreds and hundreds of millions every year all the way down to I guess one man bands, if you will. Um, and so kind of the last 10 years for me, I've been, you know, I made money online from the age of like 15 using Twitter, MySpace, that sort of stuff. It was MySpace back then. Um, and you know, after that people started to ask me how to do it. And I kind of, I guess, stumbled into a career of teaching people how to utilize the, the online world, which I guess is, you know, perfectly suited for, um, for network marketing. Yeah. Cool. All right, Mark. So, I guess the first question is really for you is we were talking the other day about um, social proof um, and I was going to go and try and uh, tackle this topic to my team but then I thought there'd be no one better to explain this to than um, getting yourself on the Zoom just to explain to the team what it's all about. Okay, yeah, cool. I mean, uh, for those who don't know, um, the idea, we're affected by this phenomenon that is social proof. Uh, basically, it's just the idea that if we see a lot of people doing something, uh, we want in, right? We never want to feel left out. Um, you know, the best company in the world, arguably, is Apple. Um, I say arguably, I mean, the numbers count for themselves. Best company in the world. And they will never just release the next iPhone or something like that. They will have people queuing up. It used to be for hours. It's now literally days. People are queuing up for days outside the Apple stores to get their hands on the latest iPhones or MacBooks or whatever. Um, and we see that on the news and, you know, instantly we don't think I want to buy that phone or I want to buy that computer, but in subconsciously we think, hmm, they must be all right, those phones, if everybody has them or if everyone's queuing up for them. And that basically, that is just the idea of social proof. We as humans don't want to be the odd one out. Um, you know, if, if every, everyone's going on that night out, we feel reluctant to stay in. We almost want to be part of it. We don't want to miss out something that happens. So, you can basically utilize this and, and loads of companies do. Um, and it's basically about sort of working as a team um, to, to show that you are bigger than necessarily, you know, you're bigger than you are kind of thing. It kind of, you, you come across as rather than yes, you all, I guess in juice plus, um, you know, have an individual franchise, but there is no, I guess, John Holloway or Alex or, you know, Rob Mullen or whoever without their team, without the social proof of people buying into them, getting excited with them um, and, and stuff like that. So basically, there's a couple of companies that you've probably heard of. Um, one is McDonald's, right? Um, and McDonald's is basically based on the fundamental that um, it isn't one company. It is thousands and thousands of companies, thousands of, pe thousands of people, entrepreneurs bringing their skill set to the table 
and saying to McDonald's, can I buy a franchise in your company, right? Uh, but they all trade under that McDon McDonald's name. They, they, you know, they get trained up and all this kind of stuff. So what happens is you see McDonald's everywhere across the globe and you think, bloody hell, McDonald's are huge. Actually, McDonald's themselves, the company that's traded on the stock market and such, they only own 18% of their restaurants, right? 82% if, you know, you can do the maths. 82% uh, of all McDonald's worldwide, this is, are owned by a franchisee partner. This is someone who's approached McDonald's and said, I want to join you. What it is you're doing, the branding, everything like that, the system you have in place, I want to learn that from you. And then they've taken and added their own, um, you know, stuff to it. In fact, McDonald's, I think it's part of their ruling to buy a McDonald's franchise, which I think is about a million pounds at the moment, um, is you have to work in the McDonald's for a year. They won't let you, um, you know, just, you could just be a businessman, pay a million quid, it's set up and leave. It doesn't work like that. You have to be in there for a year. So Dana, the, the reason why this kind of sprung to my mind was you mentioned about you guys have a bit of a system of like teaching people uh, your system essentially and, and sort of upgrading people through the different groups of, you know, once you hit different levels in the business, this, that's exactly the same as what McDonald's do is they don't let you go on your own. They don't let you leave, just pay the money and leave. You have to build the system, follow their rules, their regulations, if you will. And then after a year, you can leave McDonald's. You don't have to work in there every single day. But until that point, you're just, you have to be an employee learning the system because you might think you're ready to move out of what McDonald's have been building for a hundred years, but you're not quite ready yet. And so they make sure you, they, you, you sign a contract, you're in there for a year. Um, so that's a, a good um, sort of analogy uh, with regards to, especially XXY and all that kind of stuff is, you guys as a team can do so much more than if you do it all individually because you keep adding to one pot and that pot just get, keeps getting bigger and bigger of everybody's ideas rather than just adding to your own where it's only your ideas and maybe a few people you bring into the business. Um, and this works so kind of well when you have groups where you know, you're adding potentials into that. If you've got your testimonial in that group, that's great. But if somebody over here who's a single mom has got a testimonial in that and you had a single mom, you can just connect them, you know, tag them under that video you know, you've got a single mom looking at a single mom who's got the same testimonial, same somebody who's in the army, you've got somebody in there. Whereas if you start splitting off, it's a lot harder, I guess, uh, to do that. So I would encourage, you know, staying as a team, staying pretty solid and following that McDonald's way of saying, look, I'm going to stay in for the equivalent of my year in McDonald's. I'm going to stay in. I don't know why the hell I keep going on about McDonald's here, but <laughs> you're, you're staying in X, Y for that equivalent time to, to, to until you know you're 100% ready. And I'm sure Dan and Harriet, they have like a time of, when they think people are ready, et cetera, et cetera. But I would listen to that. They've been around uh, the business. They understand that people try and go off on their own and then they get frustrated when something doesn't work. If you fail together, and similar to as Alex was saying, you can't actually ever fail. That's not really a real uh, thing. But the, let's say, yeah, we'll use the term fail. If you fail together, then somebody in the group, in XXY, might be like, I went through this like six months ago. And as a team, you can sort it out and go, yeah, it was this easy to kind of overcome it. Whereas if you split off into your own little things, you might think you're the only person who's ever been through that problem. And so it's a lot harder to kind of overcome and stuff like that. And another kind of uh, massive thing for social proof is everybody thinks that Coca-Cola is like a big company. Uh, you know, it's on stock market, all that kind of stuff. Coca-Cola isn't a big company. Coca-Cola is like nearly 300 companies. And basically what that is, exactly the same as from a franchise perspective, um, the 300 companies have bought into the idea of Coca-Cola. And so more, most importantly, Coca-Cola had a system, syrup, right, which is basically what they sell, what they franchise and license, and you add soda water to it in a certain way. So basically, this is the exact same thing you guys can do in XXY is you, you're, a, you're a franchise within a franchise. So yes, you've got your Juice Plus franchise, but the brand you've bought into, the people you've bought into, you bought into them for a reason. Um, and so what I would say is, is stick with them until you're ready to create your own system when you're big enough, when your team's big enough. Now, again, Dan and Harry will know that kind of number in their brain. Um, but basically, as a team, you can do so much more, especially from a testimonial standpoint, because you may have never been through a certain problem, but somebody in the extended XXY team may have been through that problem. Uh, so if a potential, a potential comes to you and says, look, thinking of joining your business, but you know, you know, I can't afford it or whatever. Somebody else may have been in that same problem in XXY that's not in your direct team. If, you, if you're in those groups together as a team, you can go to that person with confidence and say, hey, you know, Julie's a potential, look at Sarah's testimonial. 
Uh, and then the next time when Sarah has, you know, a potential and she doesn't resonate with that potential perfectly, she can come to you and say, hey, would you mind sharing that testimonial? Or she can tag under your video of your testimonial. So as a team, it's so much easier, so much stronger. And for those who do or don't know uh, who Team Rhino is or was or still is, you know, um, Alex's team, essentially, everybody uh, pretty much under Alex is within is in Team Rhino. And the reason that works so well is because the equivalents of your Emma Sneddons, Emma Karens, et cetera, Katie Rabies, they were all they all had their own little groups, but everybody was buying back into that Team Rhino. And so there were so many huge, huge people uh, within that group that it just grew uh, bigger and bigger and bigger because there were so many testimonials, so many awesome people in that group. It looked amazing. You know, whenever they did events, there was always hundreds of people there rather than just five or 10. Whenever they did Zoom calls or whatever the equivalent back then, it wasn't just five people on the call, it was 200 people on the call. Um, so from an outsider looking in, people are going, bloody hell, this is big, this is a movement. This isn't just a few people getting together and saying, oh, this idea is all right. It's hundreds and thousands of people getting together going, Jesus Christ, let's make something of this. So yeah, basically, uh, social proof is very big. <laughs> so um, apart from the, like, the mass Zoom calls and everything, what would you say, um, what's the best way of utilizing social proof? On, not only online, but offline too? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so offline is definitely events. So if you could, rather than doing, let's say, 10, um, you know, 10 man events, do one 100 man event. Now, really, if you, the, rather than doing a 10, 10 man events, those, those 10 man or women or whatever um, equivalent, you could do them online or in a group or whatever, but as quick as possible is get people into the, you know, uh, the bigger events and stuff where they can, they, they see bloody hell, this is real. There's hundreds of people in a room on a random Tuesday night. Why the hell are they doing that? And they're not going to go around to every single person and say, why are you here? Why are you here? They make their own conclusion up of, oh, it must be something real. It must be something big. So events for offline, try and get as many of you guys. I know you obviously live all in different areas, but, you know, if you could come together and get an area that is like, um, where you can all kind of get together as many times as possible and just get as many people there as possible. And as Alex rightly said, you know, don't just put events on all the time, you know, do have meals, have meals out, go just do random things. Um, because people don't have that from normal jobs, if that makes sense. People don't just go on random meals out, maybe for someone's birthday or if someone's leaving or whatever, but they don't just do it for no reason. So it's kind of like if you had a, a, a restaurant and you booked out the whole place, there might only be 30 people, 30 of you there, probably a small restaurant, I suppose, if you book it out for 30 people. But like, yeah, there might be 30 people there, but on social media, and we take a picture and say, yeah, we booked out the whole place or whatever. I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, fucking hell, like, it must be pretty big if you, you're, you're filling a restaurant up and there's this many people at a meal and that looks quite fun. So definitely offline, get as many people together as possible because from an outsider looking in, it just looks so much more powerful rather than two or three of you going, oh yeah, we had, a, we had a nice meal out. Anybody can do that. Whereas normally when it's 30 people together, that's just a birthday. It's just a celebration. It's something special. So our brains go, oh, if there's 30 people, you know, at a meal or whatever, it must be something special. What is this? Let me take a look at it. So I hope that kind of makes sense with regards to offline. Definitely. Um, from an online perspective, just yeah. really quick, the equivalent is just take pictures in rooms full of lots of people, not just like random rooms. I mean, like, like you just like trying to find, you know, a football stadium, look at me and all my friends. You know, like, <laughs> as in, you, you know, at events and stuff, take pictures uh, and say, yeah, what a great business meeting tonight that was with 20, 30 people in the background. You know, even better um, is if you can be on, you know, the front of these 30 or 20 or 30 or 40, 100 people saying, yeah, I managed to tell my story tonight. That was amazing or whatever. That again is huge social proof. So as an outsider looking in, I'm going, bloody hell, if you're stood in front of 100 people, that must be something pretty big, something pretty cool. You, you must be the go-to person. I'm going to approach you about the business. If you stood in front of five people, I'm going to go, mm, you're probably not that good. That's why there's only five people. And like, like I say, obviously everyone has to start somewhere, but the beauty of you guys in XXY is it's already been started. That movement has already been created for you. You can just follow the equivalent of the McDonald's system or the Coca-Cola system. That's already in place. You just put your spin on that, if that makes sense. And then when you're ready, like you sit down with Dan, Harriet, whoever, and then they help you create your version of the system that other people do the exact same thing. And it just, it just follows and follows and follows and just duplicates, which is the perfect system for network marketing, basically. Perfect. So I guess the, the one way we can implement social proof right now is to put this on gallery view, take a photo of the screen and 
say what an epic zoom we've just had, right? Absolutely, yeah. That's a great, great thing, yeah. Anything like that. Let's just make it, sure man. you get my good side, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Right, Mark, you're an absolute legend, mate. Thanks so much for your time. I know you're a busy man. Um, yeah, no problem. Thanks everyone else for getting on the Zoom call. Um, I'm going to upload the recording on YouTube, um, so you can search it on there. Alex Webb, Mark Hudson, Zoom call. Um, but yeah, cheers, guys. Um, any questions, just PM me. Peace out, guys. See you later. Peace.